Hey guys, how you doing? Alex coming at you. Um, today we're going to talk about finally finding the tow vehicle I wanted. Um, a lot of you guys that watch the channel, you've heard me talk on the live streams where I've needed, I've needed a tow vehicle for a little bit. Uh, real quick background. Um, everyone's going to say, well, you just got rid of an F-150. Why didn't you use that as a tow vehicle? Uh, real simple. The reason I bought the F-150 initially was to have uh, that truck support a power by the hours turbo kit. Once that did not go into production after Jake made a couple of kits and he saw there was no meat in the bone, it was time to maybe look at a supercharger. Well, that development on the supercharger kit I wanted to run was taking a little long and the truck was literally sitting over a year and a half, almost two years with nothing happening to it, just an NA truck. And uh, it just wasn't something I even wanted to pursue. I didn't care about NA records. I didn't care about anything. So I said, okay, let me use it as a daily. And if you guys want probably one of the worst driving dailies of all time, get yourself into a single cab, four wheel drive, uh, short bed truck. It, it's literally a 40, 4,400, 4,500 pound four wheel drive slow Mustang with a 10 R80. So I said, okay, this isn't gonna work. So I ended up selling that and then began my search for a tow pig. So what were the prerequisites? Well, no Ford, uh, I, I, I am, you know, if you watch the live streams, I'm done with new Ford. So I thought to myself, well, I need a SUV that's a V8 and that took Ford out of the equation because the Expedition is a 10 speed, anything 3.5 EcoBoost and semi newer. And it's a 3.5. I just didn't want an EcoBoost truck period. I know it might tow a lot. It's just nothing that I wanted. And there were so many horror stories on the 10 R80 that I wanted nothing to do with it. So then that brought me to Dodge and I didn't want it to get stolen uh, in the hood by Pookie. So I said, forget that. So it left me with GM. Now GM has a bunch, a bunch of V8 full-size SUVs in the market. They have the Tahoe, they have the Yukon GMC version, and then they have a bunch of other variants like the super high-end models. So I wanted to hone in on something that had a bigger engine and an eight-speed. I still dread the 10-speed even in Chevy form. So what has a bigger than a 5.3 motor uh, and a non-10-speed? Well, 18 to 20 has the eight-speed, some earlier models had the 8-speed, and then they started getting to the 10-speeds a little later on. I think later 18 or so, I think, uh, ended up making some 10-speed stuff. So it left me with the 27 to 2019, and depending on the model, could have been an 8-speed or a 10-speed. Anyway, the, the Yukon Denali, the Yukon Denali was the one that really stuck out to me. I said, that's the one I want. I want the Yukon Denali. It's a 6.2, 8-speed, and it's basically a high-end Tahoe. Well, couldn't find one anywhere uh, and if i did find one it was severely overpriced ridiculous shape um and you have to pay up almost fifty thousand dollars for something that has under fifty thousand miles and as old as the 2018 2017 and i thought to myself no now there are a ton of 5.3 ecotech tahos everywhere and yukons but i wanted something with a 6.2 so i thought i exhausted my search i went to a dealership uh, in miami big mistake I thought I found the Denali, the Yukon Denali I wanted. Come to find out, it had a different color fender, different quarter panel, and a broken, broken glass on the passenger side uh, door. And I was like, man, my luck is not good. So after going home and being disappointed, um, I actually started looking at another vehicle that comes with the 6.2, eight speed, and it is even more available than a Yukon Denali. And you might have guessed it, if you, and you might have seen it, if you saw it on the last live stream. That's right. The Cadillac Escalade is one of those vehicles that I didn't even think about. I didn't even give it a second thought. I thought to myself, I would never get it. Why would I get an Escalade? Well, think about it. In the area that I live, it's kind of a higher end area. And these things are a dime a dozen. They're everywhere. Every soccer mom, high end chick that wants to go to the grocery store, and car service, that's right, car services use these a lot for their high-end clientele or just as an upgrade uh, in terms of a car service or let's say a Uber, like Billy Badass Uber, I forget the name of the Uber stuff, that is you can get the luxury model. Well, a lot of people use these and these are 6.2, eight speed and extremely lux luxurious. And I thought, I don't know if I'll like it. So sure enough, I do a bit of a search 
And once you know it, they're everywhere. I mean, everywhere. So what I did it was I went to a Cadillac dealership and they had like 20 of these on the lot. And I'm like, all right, let me go down there and check it out. So after it was all said and done, I got into this Escalade with a hair over 70,000 miles for under, under $45,000. That's right, a 17 Escalade and it has had a pretty extensive service record. It has had the camshaft, the lifters replaced, which is like an issue with DOD. It, had, it also has the torque converter replaced uh, about eight, five to 8,000 miles ago. And I have all those records because it was a, not a certified pre-owned, but the person that did all of the maintenance did it at this Cadillac dealership. So enough talking, let's show you this Escalade and what all is going on. Now, mind you guys, I'm not gonna give you a very technical review of this vehicle. All I'm gonna do is show you what I got. And the first thing that you notice when you open the sucker is obviously it's got these guys. Very cool for the short people out there. And I think another reason why this thing was on the lot and not a lot of people were picking it up is the peanut butter interior, that's right. It's got the peanut butter guts. And that could be a pro or a con, depending on what your taste is. A lot of them come ebony black. A lot of the, them come with like a pearl white and an ebony black interior or pearl white with a white interior or uh, iridium gray with an ebony interior. Well, this one just so happens to be peanut butter interior. So I thought, hell, freaking yeah. So obviously, you know, straightforward i'm not going to be the doug demuro or the uh you know daniel demuro i'm just going to show you the ins and outs of the truck cool little tips and tricks that i found really interesting and uh kind of on the unnecessary side but uh, cadillac kind of goes far and beyond when it comes to the luxury side of things so let's get in it real quick show you. okay so before we uh, do all the driving and stuff i'm gonna go ahead and uh show you everything that's going on inside uh, the SUV. Um, it's got the typical Cadillac stuff, okay? It's got more TVs than it knows what to do with, okay? It's kind of kind of silly. I'm probably literally never gonna use this stuff, um, but it's got really bright LEDs. That's what I do appreciate about, in terms of the lighting, uh, this Cadillac does a really good job of just having stupid, stupid, bright, bright LEDs. So one, two, three TVs in the back. I'll never use them. I don't have kids to entertain. It doesn't matter, but at the end of the day, I think it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. <laughs> I don't have enough friends to carry in this thing. And this is actually the first time I'm sitting in the back of it. And I'm gonna be honest with you, it's a little snug. Um, I'm 5'11", okay, I'm about 5'11 on a good day. And it's a little snug, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, it's got the oh shit bar, but uh, it's a little on the snug side. If you close the door and everything, it's kind of, I don't know, it's okay. It's not super uh, roomy back here, but. Now it does have a black roof, which I thought was, I don't wanna say odd, but it, you see right here, it is an odd contrast to have a black, you know, top section, but it is that funky like Alcantara, I don't know if you want to call it Alcantara, but it's definitely, you know, that fuzzy fabric, which you might want to call it Alcantara, but that's what it is all the way to the back. So when you look at it here, the top is all blacked out. And that was the first thing I noticed. Honestly, I saw the peanut butter seats, but I was like, uh, or the tan, whatever you want to call this. They call this a certain Tuscan brown, whatever. Again, this is not a uh, professional review, but I noticed really quickly how dark it is up there. And what that causes is to have a very, very dark vehicle inside. The window tint is not super dark, okay? The window tint is not super dark at all. But the moment you shut the door it, and the lights are off inside, it, it's pretty difficult to see what's going on there. And then the windshield has like a ultraviolet protection. You see how it's kind of giving you that that haze, I don't know if it's some kind of ultraviolet film or layer of uh, protection to you know protect your eyes or like a factory tint effect, but the fact that the top is dark on it makes it real difficult. I think I have the sunroof open still, so that might make the effect a little worse, but I'm, I'm never gonna open the sunroof. This, it's just not me. All right, let's take it for a spin and show you all the doohickeys that's going on in it. <laughs> this is actually probably an omen. So as I was filming this, the battery died. 
I mean, it cranks over, but it does tick, 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 tick. And it went into battery protection mode. And I'm like, I remember at the dealership, you know, it didn't, didn't sound crisp. But, it, you know, I don't know these things. I don't know if they just start kind of on the lazy side. And the voltage was fine when you're driving. And when you're key on, engine off, the voltage was fine. But uh, happened to my F-152 where the truck cold would start phenomenally. And then once it warmed up, I don't know if the cold cranking it or the hot, I don't know. Maybe it's just bad battery and the uh, not enough amps to turn everything over. But uh, yeah, so now I'm waiting on a jump. So this review uh, is going to be probably an omen of uh, the future of the ownership of this truck because it's already started out interesting. But you know what? Might as well put it on video because once I get it jumped, I'm going to go right to a uh, parts store and get a brand new battery. They're like 300 bucks. So... Yeah, this review has become a, a battery review. I've got to see what battery's in there. It looks like some cheap-ass, shit-ass battery, so we'll see what it looks like when I get it out. They got some pretty ambient lighting um, when you're driving. If you look across the uh, door panels, it's got pretty decent ambient lighting that's going on. It also has uh, massaging and... Um, it's got massaging and obviously bolstering support, but you can literally set this thing to massage your back. Roll, need, anti-fatigue, don't know what that is. So we'll just leave that shit there. So yeah, it does have massaging sheets, heated and cooled as Cadillacs should have. But yeah, typical kind of over the top, bougie, um, you know, amenities that I probably won't use, I'll be honest with you. But look, again, it was either between this or a Yukon Denali and the features on this are pretty great and this is the platinum version it's an escalade uh platinum version with the 22 inch wheels blah 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 so it ended up uh working out because i got it for like i said under forty-two thousand dollars. so uh, i i think i ended up um doing pretty well on it honestly another cool thing uh this truck or suv has is that's a camera okay so the reverse or the rear view mirror there's actually a camera in the bumper and what you're seeing is like a, maybe a 30% um, zoomed in shot. So if you want to see what's actually like in the back seats, you literally hit the flip button and you're seeing the real world outside, but you flip it again and it's a camera that's by the bumper. And actually I prefer this uh, because when you're changing lanes, and there's like a blind spot issue with that these blind spot monitoring systems maybe aren't picking up because it's right behind you um this thing picks it up nicely and it makes it really easy to see what's going on behind you and it helps that it's zoomed in about 30 percent or so really really does a good job so i keep it there because again that's the camera that's the real world that's a camera very cool you can flip through what's selectable on the menu hit it to the right and you can see what what you want to see in the middle there hit it to the right again you can toggle what you want to see at all times there so i usually just have it on the radio when it's navigation it's navigating in there and this one i was trying to get the gear select or the you know what gear you're in and this one the trans temp not that that really matters oil pressure seems low but once you get going it gets up to about 45 or 50 so and it takes 520 oil which i thought was a little suspect in my opinion is in demonstration mode. Connected by OnStar's high-speed 4G connection. Press the blue OnStar button to learn more. Okay, now for the infotainment system, a lot of you guys warned me that this might be an issue going forward. There are no buttons. You know what I mean? There are no buttons. Everything's like a haptic kind of like feel like your cell phone would be. So the fan does not have a button, but it does have a kind of like a buzzing. It is a haptic feedback, like a slight vibration, when you actually uh, press the button, go to the home screen, get off of the nav stuff. And that's the thing, I always have an inclination to hit this metal thing, but it's the thing right above it that you actually have to hit. Obviously, I'm, I don't have a CD in it, so it doesn't matter. So, um, I do like the fact that it has, or it's emitting a Wi-Fi signal. It, this is nothing new, I get it, but it's new to me. Um, but it does have a bunch of settings. I do like the weather map, believe it or not. It's, it's one of those things that I actually care about because, you know, based on what I do for a living, it's highly dependent on, on the weather. So I think it's uh, pretty neat. There's an hourly map. And then it tells you all your location and everything else like that. So let's go back home and 
setting a video. See, you know what? I haven't even messed with any of this. Press rear media to change source. Okay. Okay, so th this actually takes DVDs. Okay, I mean, you learn something new every day. And I do like the satellite radio. Um, I do miss the satellite radio features that I used to have on other vehicles. So this works out really nicely. It also has access to text, but who in the hell would connect their car so that a text can come through with some bullshit and then your girlfriend is in the car and you have to explain to her what that guy or girl <laughs> sent you. So yeah, I would never connect SMS to um, the heads up display. So there you go. So now that it's daytime and it is winter, this is good. I'm going to show you another issue that is going to happen with this Escalade. And because it's black, you know what's going to happen. Pollen. A whole, a whole bunch of pollen is going to start being an issue. And I've always said that black cars are insanely difficult to keep clean. So it might be an issue keeping this thing clean in the long run but obviously I got to care for it a little bit it, it is a you know upgrade from what I, I'm used to so just you know I have a uh, bright blue GT500 the Corvette is a uh, darker color so but it stays in the garage but this thing's gonna live outside so I definitely have to make sure that when I drive it and I hit some bugs and crap that you know you get them off right away it has some sap already see tree sap so you got to be careful where you park it, what you do, it's gonna need many washes, so I probably have to budget for details and uh, just generally maintaining a black vehicle. I'm not a fan, and that's the reason I didn't really want a black vehicle. By the way, this is the camera that you see when you flip the screen back there. I don't know what that is, and I don't wanna press it for fear of uh, it doing something that I don't want it to do. And for towing, obviously, you go here, has a good tow hitch you flip a couple of tabs down here left and right and it just comes off actually let me do it live show you guys what all that's about <clears throat> so you will hear you twist I think counterclockwise there you go. and then this guy just comes off and there's your tow hitch so I'm really happy uh, again that's I'm gonna be using this to tow quite a bit so that's that was the whole goal with this thing initially just to get a tow pig so that I can bring the notch to places the Corvette to places and the GT500 to places once I uh, finish everything up but yeah plenty of room to stuff the transmission in there I'm gonna be heading to Lund Racing soon and I'll be able to stuff the transmission in there then I'll be going to Orlando Speed World and pick up a T56 from Ben Calamer so I'm really happy that everything uh, worked out exactly like I wanted to. I'm very happy with the purchase, very happy with all the little features this thing has all over the place. Um, it even has a charger here. What is this? Yep, charger there too. What is that back there? Let me get back there to see what's going on. Because I really haven't really sat back here. What is this? Whoa, Jesus! Who would want that? Let me do this. Let me bring this guy all the way forward. So this is all the... I mean, this is where you can set it to massage you. This blows your ass. <laughs> oh, so stupid. It's kind of an over, overkill truck, I'll be honest with you. But God, it's either this or a Denali for, for about the same price. Does this guy go up on its own? Whoa, what the hell? <laughs> what in the hell is happening here? Okay, but I don't think it retracts uh, automatically. You have to do that. Actually, theoretically, can it do everything from the front? Let me see. So that's this guy. Uh, this guy. This guy? This guy. Whoa, okay. So let me, let me do that again. And I think the up is automatic too. Let me see. So, okay, hit it again. Uh huh. That is fancy schmancy. Let's do this guy. Do it again. Jesus. I could lay a little mattress out here, got some putty, and have my. 
No, I can't do that, Alex. Can't do that. But it doesn't come back on its own. See, the other ones, these do. These, I can hit a button and they actually come up. There we go. Keep those up. And I think these guys are... Oh, come on, baby. I think these guys are manual, so you have to... So they only go forward, but you have to manually bring them back. All right, there you go. I learned something today with you guys. So, very cool. Okay. Bada bing, bada boom. Good stuff. Let me see. I think I turn on. Does this flip down a little bit? What is this? What is this? Oh, okay. Monitor three, channel noise seven. Uh, okay. Well, I can't play anything. There's nothing there. No disc. And then you got this guy. Blu-ray. Oh, Blu-ray. Like that matters anymore. <laughs> so very cool. If you wanna play your, uh, you know, get a headset on, watch whatever. Uh, I don't think you can use anything in here for that. It does have 110. So if I wanna tune. And I want to get uh, my laptop. That'd be cool, honestly. If I'm at a track or something, I just get in this thing, shut the door, and just tune with the 110 and be the happiest cat on the planet. So, all right, there you go. I've given you the whole tour of the peanut butter gutted uh, Alcantara. Uh, I don't know headliner. You know, if it had Starlight, that'd be even better. All right, let me end it there. So, I wanted to take a little bit of time here to thank all of you. Um, I am, you've heard it before on the chat, broke kid from Massachusetts, Western Mass, nothing going on, shit ass mill town, grew up poor, the whole nine yards, and um, we were able to uh, get the channel to such a growth that it ended up allowing me to buy a GT500, a Corvette, um, Tune for Lund Racing, uh, and then ultimately get me into a pretty nice daily driver SUV Cadillac Escalade. Um, Understand this guys, I started very late in life. I never really had much success until I was 38. And that's when I started noticing that the harder you work, the better the outcome. So if a dumbass like me from Holyoke, Massachusetts can do it, pretty much anyone else can do it. So again, I wanna thank everyone out there, not only the members, the subscribers, especially the haters, you guys absolutely motivate me the most. Trust me, you, you really do. And I'm being genuine about that because um, you need some constructive criticism or just criticism in general just to better your product just to have the haters watch you the most because those guys are the best those guys are the most uh loyal fans because they want to watch everything you do all right guys i'm out of here thanks for listening thank you for allowing me to um live a good life and purchase a pretty badass tow rig i'm gonna hopefully get you as much content as possible now that i am using this as a tool to get my cars from here to the track to lawn racing to the text to everything now i have no excuse to get you some track logs and get the cars worked on properly now that i have this vehicle as a tow vehicle and a daily driver thanks for listening guys and again thank you Talk to you later.